Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel for today's Daily Draft and our fourth to last draft of Modern Horizons 3. Full transparency here today, my air conditioning is out in my house, so I've got a direct fan on me here to my left, which is producing a little bit more white noise than normal. I've tested the levels. I really do hope that it's not too bad, but if, 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 that's, what's, if that's what you hear, then just know that that's what's going on over on the left side of me, but hopefully it shouldn't be too much of an issue. We've got a pack to dive into here. We are... Debating between Bridgeworks Battle, 3 mana, plus 2, plus 2, and fight at sorcery speed. That's also a land. Or Shogengar, Sire of Famine, 5 mana, 6, 6, Flyer. You can sack creatures for free to make blood tokens. And that's pretty much all it does. It's, it's still pretty darn good, though. I have not found a great use for Volatile Storm Drake yet. I think it's between these two for me here. Do I want to draft a Bridgeworks Battle or go into black here? I think green is a better color than black. This is really close. I do think Shogengar is a great card. I think Bridgeworks Battle is a little bit more... Um, keeping you open than drafting uh, Shogengar there in pack one. Kali of the Vast. If only this was Commander. <laughs> but it is not, so we will not be taking that here. Planar Genesis, look at the top four, put a land on the battlefield tap. If you don't, put a card into your hand and the rest on the bottom. That seems fine, but not great. There is a Galvanic Discharge here, which I think is just the best card by a good bit. There is also an Ajani Fells, the Godsire, which I think is also pretty good. Um, Red Green's the best deck in the format, not to say we can find our way into it, but we have outs to kind of continue down a green path or potentially off-ramp and go into energy. If we take the Discharge here, I, I wouldn't at all fault you for taking a Johnny Fells of God Sire, but I think that's pretty much what it's between. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Discharge. And we followed up with another one. What else do we have here? It that heralds the end. Devourer of Destiny. 7 mana, 6-6. Six, six. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do at the beginning of your first upkeep, look at the top four cards. You may put one of those on top of your library and you exile the rest when you cast this you get to exile a permanent that isn't devoid i do think galvanic discharge following up another galvanic discharge is not a bad spot to be so that's what i'm going to go ahead and do here and do we take a third one i mean i think we do there's a reckless pyro surfer which is also very good and a Refurbished Familiar, which I love. Signature Slam is pretty good, too. Repurposer is fine, but... I mean, we are... Galvanic Discharge is never a bad card to have in your deck. So we're just going to go ahead and take that here. And now we've got a Mardu Land and a Jeskai Land and a Pyretic Rebirth. So... I think I'm going to take the Jeskai Land here... There's also Polluted Delta, Hope Ender Coatle, but I think it's between the two lands and the Rebirth. We want to take the Rebirth and bridge into black a little bit with the, with the Discharges here. We probably put our neighbor into black, which means pack two is not going to be great for black because we passed the Shogengar there. But the pair of this landscape is the perfect land for an energy deck, and we could be heading in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and take that here. Another late Refurbished Familiar, we could find ourselves in black red. I think that's the best card in this pack by quite a bit. There's also a Twisted Landscape, but I'm going to take the late Refurbished Familiar, and maybe that is where we end up going. I don't think we need to take Meteoric Mace. There's a couple of blue and white cards that aren't great, but I do think Accursed Marauder is a very good card, so I'll go ahead and take that here. Now we've got a Frogmere Enforcer. A Grixis land, a Transmogrant. Are we finding ourselves back into red-black once again? It's possible. I, I don't think the Enforcer is very good. I think the Transmogrant is actually slightly better than the Enforcer. I'm just going to go ahead and take that here. We are on the wheel and we found a Conduit Goblin. And a couple of other white energy cards to go with our three Galvanic Discharges. That could be a sign that red-white is open, which is a spot I do love to be in. 
Then we get a Dreadmobile, which I do like in red black. A Naya landscape as well as an Insight. There's also an Expel the Unworthy, but I don't think we should take that over Dreadmobile here. All right, a Cursed Marauder. Number two, Obstinate Gargoyle number one. I guess I'll take the second Marauder. And then we see a couple of blue cards I'm probably not likely to play. I'll never play Meltdown. Maybe we play Sage. So we got that late Goblin. Maybe we can find ourselves in Red Black or Red White. I think Red Black is also a high possibility. So let's see what we find here in pack two. We got nothing in the rare spot with power balance. What else do we have? Only white card is Expel. Only black card is a Cursed Marauder. Number three. I don't know how, how good three of these are. Um, a Pyretic Rebirth. And really nothing for red, white either. So, I mean, I guess I could take the Accursed Marauder, and if Red Black is really is open, we could wheel the Rebirth. But let's just take a third Accursed Marauder, I guess. Psychic Frog is a card I've wanted to play with. And maybe today's the day with three Marauders? I don't know. What's the other option here? There's another Rebirth, there's another Transmogrant, there's no red cards except Void Pouncer, which I don't think I want to take here. Green has been pretty cut, there is black green, but I really do want to play three of these Discharges, and Psychic Frog would mean we have to kind of go away from that as well, so as much as I don't really want to take a Pyretic Rebirth this early, I think I will pass the Frog here. That is a late Kozilex Unsealing. Well, not late, it's pick three. But we are here debating between Fell the Profane and Spymaster's Vault. Both of these are very good. We do already have three discharges for removal. And I think Spymaster's Vault is just a really good land. I think it's the best of this rare land cycle. And I think it's a pretty darn good land. I would love a Fell the Profane, don't get me wrong. But I'm going to just add to my land count with a Vault here. Okay, I think this is a time we could take Ashling. I passed it on this I passed on this card a lot. And with 3 Galvanic Discharges already and really nothing else to take in this pack, I think it's totally fine to take here. And it probably makes our deck Charge Bug, Blood Soaked Insight, and that's about it. I think I'll take the Insight here. Don't think we're playing the Bridgeworks Battle. Obviously regret not taking Shogengar Pack 1, Pick 1 now, but you can't, you can't know that going into it. So I think I'll take the Red Black Dual Land with Upside here. <sighs> Lots of Buried Alives. This card should be Buried Alive. Um, got Void Pouncer, Simulacrum, Teachings... Guess I'll take the Simulacrum, it's a cheap artifact. I found this card actually does some decent work when it comes to its activated ability of removing things, too. So, take that here. We are at five instants and sorceries for Ashling. And... Yeah, we, we still need some pieces for this to come together. Like Cranial Ram. Alright, I guess we're doing Red Black again. It's my favorite deck in the in the format, and I'm um, fine to draft it here if you'll if you'll give it to me. So I'll take Insight here, goes well with Transmogrant, Simulacrum. If we can find a um Marionette Apprentice goes well with the one one tokens it makes, things like that. And we're doing just fine in the playables department. Pyretic Rebirth did, in fact, wheel, so I guess we take it here. Currently have five artifacts, but also eight creatures to go with it, because you can get creatures back with it, too. Now here's six artifacts. This is 
a dual land that could help us splash the battle or another green card if we wanted. Also, just more fixing. I feel like if we want another transmogrant, we'll be able to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the dual land there. Nothing here. I'll just I'll just cut the dual land as well. It's, it's a black land that could splash white or green if we need to. Cut the black card, don't play it. Cut the black card, don't play it. And basic land. All right, pack three. What do we have here? Well, Kappa Cannoneer, do we have the lands to splash that? We've got a Jeskai land, which is red-blue in this deck. Not yet, but this is going to be pretty darn good in an Artifacts deck. I mean, it's got Improvise... It has unblockable most turns because we have tons of artifacts. Spawn Gang Commander is a good card, but not very synergistic with what we're doing. But I think I'm going to try to find a way to get this Kappa Cannoneer in here. What is this? I don't believe I've seen this. 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Beginning of combat, exile one target card from a graveyard. 2 mana to adapt to. And whenever counters are put on it, put a creature card exiled with it onto the battlefield. Under your control with finality counter. Gains haste and sacrifice it. That seems okay, but not, like, super great. In fact, I think a fourth Galvanic Discharge is probably just better than this. I would definitely play this. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and take the Discharge here. Alright, another Cranial Ram. And not much else. There's some good cards here. Lots of lots of the gold commons. Five gold commons, in fact. Thief of Existence is pretty good, but not really on the splash for us. Static Prison is fine in energy decks, but I think Cranial Ram is what we are looking for here. Got a Jund Land, another Bridgeworks Battle. Simulacrum for Artifact Count, no black cards. Um... Guess I take Simulacrum over the Twisted Landscape here. There's not really anything else I'm playing. There's the Marionette Apprentice. I do love to see that. So we will snap that one up pretty quickly here. There's the Transmogrant. This doesn't fix how we want it to. There's a Flare of Malice. We've got two Simulacrums and a Transmogrant that aren't bad. Oh no, we just have the Transmogrant. So you have to sacrifice aim. A black creature. Is that better than a second transmogrant here? There's also a Furnace Hell Kite, notably, with eight artifacts. That's not a ton. I'm going to try out Flare of Malice. I haven't tried out that card yet. All right. Cranial Ram pick seven. Don't mind if I do. Polluted Delta could help splash Kappa Cannoneer, but I think we have to take the Cranial Ram. Refurbished Familiar in the same pack with a blue red land. But I think we got to take Refurbished Familiar. That's exactly what our deck is trying to do here. No lands here. I'll take the Sentry. I guess I could take Siege Smash as well. Let's take the Siege Smash. Don't think I'm playing either of them, though. All right, Black Red Land. Doesn't fix for blue, unfortunately. I think I'll take it, though. A second Insight. I don't think I want to play a second Insight. Nothing here, not playing a Meltdown. Currently have four lands here, so 25 cards. Need a couple cuts, that seems fine. I don't think we need to splash Bridgeworks Battle, especially considering there's no other green cards we want to splash. Buried Alive is nothing. I could play the Smash if I wanted to. And looks like that's about all we're going to get. All right. I'll go ahead and build this one, and I'll see you after deck building. Alright, so here is where I ended up. I am going to attempt to splash the Kappa Cannoneer off an island in a perilous landscape. Not the greatest thing. I would have loved one more blue-red or blue-black land, but we didn't get that. We do have 17 lands with a blood-soaked insight here as well. Uh, cranial, three cranial ramps, four discharges... 10 artifacts, 2 refurbished familiars, cut one of the rebirths here, 3 accursed marauders will help us out against Eldrazi, apprentice is nice ping, 
one insight. I'm going to try out this Flare of Malice. I mean, it could be okay with something like Marauder or Transmogrant that gets stuck on the battlefield. Uh, could also just cast it for four. That seems fine as well. So this is what I'm going to run. I'm going to give it a shot. Not super thrilled with this possibility, but, you know, these kind of decks are fun, and I've had pretty good success with them. So I will see you in game number one. Okay, so we're on the draw. We don't have a blue source, but we have Cannoneer. We also have a Marauder to kill their play and a Familiar. This hand is not great, but we're going to be thinning our deck of lands here by sacrificing these. So, hopefully we'll be okay. We've only got two blue sources in the deck, so the Cannoneer might stick in the hand for a while. Guess changes what I'm gonna do. Next turn I play Vault and Marauder if they play a creature that I need to kill. That's not a creature, so now I, I can still just use my landscape, not play the Marauder here. So let's go ahead and get a mountain. And now next turn we can play Simulacrum followed by Familiar, which is pretty decent. Something else we could do is play Vault, play Marauder, sack creatures, and then also have the Marauder connive too. Never mind, they didn't play a creature, so we'll just go... Let's go Simulacrum followed by Familiar here. Draw two. Discard. What did they discard? Reiterating Bolt. That's a pretty good one to have discarded. I wonder if they're mono red. I mean, they could be. They might also just be missing blue. I'd be shocked they didn't play that as a blue land. Another amulet. Wow, okay. Got all the card advantage. Okay, there's a simulacrum. And there is familiar down. Alright, let's do... Familiar holding up Discharge here. I think they're just mono red. I haven't seen a mono color deck this format yet. Oh, never mind. Alright. So we'll hold up Discharge here. I'm not going to Discharge this thing. Oh, that is absolutely brutal. That, that is a straight three for one here. Uh, yeah, good for you, I guess. Can't do anything about that. It's the second time Mog Mob has been cast on me and just absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> Alright, pass the damage. My turn. Cranial Ram. Or Transmogrant. Cranial Ram holding up Discharge or just bringing back Transmogrant here. I think I'm just going to bring back Transmogrant. Could also Discharge if I feel like I absolutely have to.
see if they choose to kill it or not. They've got something they can do, and it's not this, because they don't have any energy. I think I'd like to save this combo of Marauder and Discharge. Okay, they're just going to kill it with that, I guess. Alright, so ne neither of us are doing much of anything here. There is a blue source... And I think we need to go get that now. Let's do Cranial Ram holding up Galvanic Discharge, and next turn we can Kappa Cannoneer. go ahead and kill that and oh you can't activate because you need an additional one there okay all right then I guess we'll do this then does have ward four so discharge can't even kill it they don't have the energy to do that and I guess they can't beat the cannoneer. Alright. <laughs> once we drew the blue, it was good enough. <laughs> Alright, once again, cannoneer in hand, no blue source. But we do have black and red. We have simulacrum on one, discharge on two while we crack the land. Ashling on four, hopefully if we can find one more land. So, I think it's okay. We could afford to wait plenty last game. Let's go ahead and just get the black here. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and discharge this thing. Next turn, we got a couple options. If they play a creature that we want to kill, we can Marauder. If they don't, we can Cranial Ram. Hex Gold, Slith. Um. Let's go get another red here. And then... I'd be shocked if they block, and I think I'm going to Accursed Marauder sacrifice the Simulacrum here. I could be wrong. I might just want to play Cranial Ram. They attack with Slith, they play another creature, then I Marauder, and then they're still... Next turn, I mean, they're still sacrificing probably the Slith, so... Yeah, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and play Cranial Ram. If I draw a Swamp next turn, I've got a great options here. And if I don't, I've still got the same options I just had. They did pay the energy, so I can't block. That's a 3-2... And another creature. Okay. Well, that's actually quite good there. So, let's discharge. So, if I discharge this, I have to pay the extra energy. And then I can marauder that. Sac attack with both of these get one extra point of damage. So what would I rather? One extra point of damage or one extra energy in hand? I think I'd... I'd no, it actually gets two extra points of damage. Okay, so let's do this then. And I guess again, maybe I could just play Cranial Ram again. I could still do the Marauder thing next turn. 
Okay, let's do this, I guess. And I, I'm pretty aggressive here, too. The Marauder's gonna get rid of something. Whether it's a Hex Gold Slith or... Or a bigger creature here. Okay, down goes the 3 1. Can we just win this race here, maybe? I mean. Like, this is nine points of damage. They have to just block. <laughs> Neither of us are hitting land drops. Okay, they found their fourth. Let's see what they got with it. Alright, hitting me again. Take four. You have a five four. Maybe I let this get a little bit too far out of control, because what let's see what the next creature they play is. If they don't play a creature, I'm I feel in great shape. But if they do Either of them are probably gonna be good left on the battlefield, and they did. I'm sure they're gonna sacrifice the trainer to the marauder here. I think I'm going to sacrifice the Marauder and not the Transmogrant. It adds to my artifact count for these double cranial rams. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we'll just do this. And then hit for 7, I guess. Or is it 6? 7 here. Both of these are now lethal threats. We don't have any more removal in hand, though. But I'm assuming they can't attack with Slith anymore. Okay, that makes it more difficult. Hmm, so I can move this cranial ram over here, attack, they have to block with something, and then when this dies, move one of them back, or I could just play Ashling. They're probably blocking with Auxiliary. If I attack with both, they eat this, they trade there, and then they've got a creature and I don't. So I can't do that. Um... If I move this over, they block there. They have a 6-5. I'm then going to have... A 4-2 that I can re-equip next turn to attack into that again. I think I'm rather just going to go ahead and get my creature down, though. Again, if they don't have another creature now, I still have lethal on the board. Um, and I can do the trick of moving around cranial rams as well. Galvanic Discharge will be a great draw. I know we've got two more. <laughs> Any instant or sorcery wouldn't be horrible because then I can discard the cannoneer to draw a card. And then if I draw into another instant or sorcery, then I win because it deals two damage to them. Alright, well, there goes that plan. Okay, so they have a way to kill one of these things, is what this tells me here. So if I attack with both, I'm going to die. 
on the backswing. So how do I play this now? If I double block, again, I'm left with nothing, and they have a 3-3. Three, three. And if I double block, they still kill one of them, because, again, they have a way to kill one of these things, otherwise they're leaving themselves dead right now. So I'm kind of in a lose-lose situation here. So I take it they have a 7-6, and, and now what? They have another Thraben charm, maybe? It's about the worst draw I could have had. I guess I move this and then try to block their slith. I mean, I could go for the win here and attack with both, but if they if they remove any one of my creatures, then I, I dead on the I'm dead on the backswing no matter what. Conversely, this I can try to block here. When they kill this, I can block here. I take three. I bring the transmogrant back as a 3-3. Three, three. So I think this is better. So no attacks in the turn. I know they've got removal for something. If they've got two removal, then I just lose. But let's see if they want to use the Thraven Charm now or whatever it is. Hopefully they don't have like Winged Wisdom or whatever that card is that gives things plus two, plus two and flying. Okay, so they, they know that something's up here, obviously. Alright. See what they choose. Probably got to be Eerie Auxiliary unless they have two removal spells in hand. Yeah, tough spot for them here. If I if I move this over and attack again, then they yeah, it's got to be because I know they've got that. So if I attack, they remove this and then. I could still block with this, though. Right? Yeah, I can still block here. Even if they do remove this prior to the slith. But if they have two removal spells... Do I just lose to two removal spells? I mean, I do lose to two removal spells no matter what I do, if I attack or don't. So I guess that means I should attack and make them use one of these. See what it is here. It's a combat trick. Okay, it was a combat trick. Alright. I guess that means I had lethal before, but I couldn't risk it. Because again, I would have lost on the backswing had they, not, had they just had removal. They can't really attack if they don't have another creature here because I can just bring it right back. So. Alright. This gets their last land. Oh, it wasn't a land. Okay. So these give plus four. So I can force the trade here now. Reach and Death Touch? Yeah, so I force this trade, and then I win next turn. There we go. Alright, we managed to play around whatever they had, including that combat trick. Play conservatively and get the win. We start on the draw here, but we got a good hand. So we'll keep it Simulacrum into... Ooh, now we also can cast <laughs> the Kappa Cannoneer that we don't have in our hand yet. We can decide which one of these we want to do, and it will be a Cursed Marauder, <laughs> now that they've got a Cursed Wombat. And I'm actually going to sacrifice the Marauder. I think this 1-1 artifact is more beneficial to us on the battlefield. 
than a 2 1 because it adds to both of these affinity and artifact counts here. All right, there's a card we passed. We're going to see if I regret it. All right, that was a pretty darn good draw there. So let's go like this. Pay two. Right? Yeah, they don't have the mana. Okay, so we'll pay two, then we'll play Cranial Ram and attack for one. Now they can't uh, get in a Curse Marauder for free that kills one of our creatures, so that's good. I guess I could have waited until they tried to adapt it, but it's still a little risky. Oh, that's scary. They didn't crack that, meaning they want a colorless source. Okay, kill the refurbished familiar, sure. Evolution Witness can't currently adapt it, so that's nice. I do think we need to get rid of it here. Go ahead and get in for three, which makes this cost four mana, so we still can't do it. So we'll end the turn. Another Cranial Ram. I think if they don't have interaction here, I can also cast Blood Soaked Insight. Because I deal four to them, which makes this cost three mana. Okay, that's nice. So let's cast this. This works until the end of our next turn. And choose two target creature cards in your graveyard. Sack a creature if you do return those to the battlefield. So we've got a couple of good cards to get back as well. Could sack the Simulacrum, bring back an Accursed Marauder, kill their only creature. That'll do. So let's... Get these two back. Sacrificing the Simulacrum here. Go ahead, I mean, this isn't an artifact or anything, but okay, they go to four. So this says discard a card, put a counter on it, exile three cards, it gains flying. We do have three cards, we can give it flying. What does this do? becomes a copy of a permanent until end of turn. Okay, so you don't get the cast trigger. Sure. Till end of turn, right? Or until you do something else with it. Till end of turn. All right. Nice little win there as well. All right, we're up first. With, once again, Great Hand, Cranial Ram, into Refurbished Familiar, into Marauder to kill whatever they've played. I love these red-black decks in this format. I mean, most people, I think, think that they're not very good, but they've been by far and away the best deck I have drafted. 
I think with red black, I'm currently like 18 and, and five or something. I think I've drafted it three times and got two trophies with it. So that is pretty nice. Discharge is also nice. That means next turn we can potentially do Marauder and Discharge if we wanted to, but they're not going to play two creatures, so we're not going to do that. Probably just going to play Familiar here. But the combination of Discharge plus Marauder is nice. You pick off the small things with Discharge, and then the Marauder just nabs the bigger things. It's been really good. Yeah, that's an easy discharge target next turn, so we can discharge that even if they choose not to block here and then Marauder their their turn three play. So Alright, they know we have Flare of Malice now, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's not great. Well they could know if they if they're familiar with the format knowing that we're getting priority right now. If they go to re to kill the refurbished familiar, I guess I could just sack it to Flare of Malice. That way, this is just, just free. Alright. What do you got? Nothing. We don't have any other artifacts to put on the battlefield, so... Can't do that. I guess we just attack and then we could cast Blood Soaked Insight and hold up Galvanic Discharge. If they don't have anything here. Sure, I guess I'll just do that then. Ooh, got a Felia. That's nice. I unfortunately can't do both of these next turn. I'm going to hope that... Do I want to do this now? I think I do. Gives them one less draw step to draw out of something, draw into a dog umbra or something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this here. This enters the battlefield tap. So next turn we can play Felia and Marauder. We lose the auxiliary, but we do get a land. Okay. Expelling the germ. Uh, sure, I guess.
All right, so we'll do this plus Marauder here, I think. We lose the Eerie Auxiliary, but we were never going to be able to cast that either. So when this attacks, I blink a permanent. And if it's mine, this gets a counter. So I could blink... Okay, so that's a 3-3 a three, three now. Sure. Uh, yeah, I see, I see. Okay, so... Yeah, I guess we do this now. We we choose to trade Refurbish Familiar with that instead. So let's do this. Felia survives. And... Can blink the elk here as well. So we just play this. Equip. And attack. Blink the elk. Attack for four. And the turn they get back a 3-3. Three, three. Why do I have the ability to do this? Because I have to pay four mana, and two, including two greens. So I don't know why that works, but oh well. There we go. That's four wins. All right, the hand here is certainly slow, but we have all three colors, including an early removal spell. So I think that's fine. Um, all right, there's an early creature. Not gonna discharge that. Gonna see if they have a better thing to play. And I probably won't even discharge it if they don't play anything else. Although that being on the battlefield could be pretty annoying with an Ashling for us, so... Yeah, that's much better discharge target here. Alright, drawing nothing but land so far. Not not the greatest thing, but... That's at least something we can play. So I guess we do. Do I want it to be a 2-3, or do I want a 1-1? One, one? Well, 2-3 blocks both of their creatures, assuming they don't have removal, which they probably do. <laughs> sure, I think a 2-3. Usually you want to choose the servo option on that, but again, a 2-3 can threaten to block both of their things. That's a lot of damage, potentially. More lands. Priest of Titania. Okay, that's a mana dork. Discharge. I don't know how to use that. I probably have to use it on Simulacrum so that Ashling doesn't die here. And then I play Swamp so I could also use Rebirth. I guess... I could use this on something else, and then if they do Simulacrum Ashling, I could get it back with Rebirth and kill something. That's also pretty good. So what do I discharge? I probably have to discharge a Gatekeeper here. I also get to Rummage as I do this, so that could change our 
option. So let's do this. Discard one of the swamps. Drawing a Dreadmobile. I think I'll just go ahead and play Dreadmobile. And do I attack here? I mean, they could block. I'd trade with, like, Gatekeeper and Priest. Probably not. Pyretic Rebirth is going to be nice here. Assuming that they kill the Ashling, which it does look like they will do that. So let's crack this. I guess for red? A cursed marauder, not horrible. I mean, it gets rid of one of their... This just gets rid of the Mana Dork, I guess. But it also lets me attack with Dreadmobile. So let's do this. Hold full control. No! <sighs> I lost my ability. I was going to try to full control crew in response, but apparently I needed to hold full control before I did that. Like with this trigger on the stack. That was annoying. Oh well. Alright. No attack. I don't think we can, like, race this here. The Rebirth can get back Ashling and deal 4 damage to something. Okay, I guess we're just playing both of these things. No, no, not that. Let's do... Let's do this here. And I can crew with the, uh... The Transmogrant. Still. Hit him for six. There might have been a moment earlier where I could have activated that to when they were going to kill Ashling the first time. But I'm not sure. Alright, did that in the wrong order, I guess. That's okay, I'll take it. Alright. Crew here. Probably sacrifice it to the Dreadmobile. Because I could just get it right back. Because I'm not doing anything else with my mana. And it comes back as a 3-3. So, let's just sack that. Deals an extra damage. This has Menace. They go to 5. I've got a 3-3 three, three now. Alright, Cycling Ravager. That's fine. Still have 4 mana if they want it. Fanged Flames.
All right. Guess we do this then. Okay. And this lethal threat plus transmogrant crewing it is good enough to win there. All right, we're up first now with a very aggressive good hand here. Transmogrant on one. Cranial ram on two. Cranial ram on three. Start bashing in. All right, they've got, it looks like, galvanic discharge here. So something's going down. But doesn't really change the way we're playing. I guess we could hold up Eviscerator's Insight instead. But, I mean, I would wonder if they discharge the germ. Looks like they don't. Banged flames this and exile it. Okay. Alright, we'll just play this. Next turn we've got Ram and Insight here. Or Ram and Crack a Land. But we know they have Discharge in hand, so... I mean, if they go to Galvanic Discharge the Dreadmobile after we crew it, then we can just sack it to Eviscerator's Insight. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> What's the escape? Five other cards. Okay. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and crew. Hit. And just hold up insight or cracking a landscape, I guess. Five others. Okay. So we're going to have to try to outrace Flage. Knowing that they still have Galvanic Discharge in hand. Okay. So if we move to crew the Dreadmobile, they're going to discharge it. We can Eviscerator's Insight in response. Could also get it back with the Rebirth, just let it happen and get it back with the Rebirth here, and then shoot down their Charge Bug. I fully expect them to do that, so... Let's just let them do that, and then I think I still just have to decide what I'm doing with the insight or just getting it back with the rebirth here. So we have to decide now if we're going to sack it. And I think I'm not going to. So let's just let it resolve, get it back with Rebirth here. Hmm. Do we play this as a land? That guarantees next turn we can play Dreadmobile and hold up Insight. I don't think I'm going to play it as a land. Notably, already four cards, so that makes five. Next turn they can escape Flage if they find a Plains, and they did. So Flage is coming down next turn and bolting something. Is there a way we can cast Blood Soaked Insight? So if we equip this, this becomes a 4-2. They might chump, they might not. If we hit them for 4, this then costs 3 mana. We would be able to, but it's just... Are they actually going to block? I 
I don't think they do. So I'm going to play this, push an extra point of damage, and then incite the germ when they kill it with Flage. And then we have to figure out a way to kill Flage, which I don't know how that's going to happen. Because this enters the battlefield or attacks, it starts lightning bolting us. <laughs> which I don't think we can beat. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I think we're just going to lose to Flage here, unfortunately. Um, can sack it to the Dreadmobile, but this thing is just going to continually gain three life every turn and bash us for six. Nine, basically. Double Galvanic Discharge is really all I can think of, and we need more draw steps to get there, so I might... I guess I could sacrifice this germ to try to find that. That's the only thing I can think that might even remotely save us in this spot. So, instead we draw two swamps. <laughs> Take two, take three, you're at 20, yeah. Don't really know what we can do here now. It's just a bomb of a card. Whoa. I guess I forgot that was in the deck. Okay, now let's see if I can do the whole full control crewing thing. So with that on the stack, we crew one. Then we go. <laughs> I had totally forgotten about that being in the deck. We hit him for three, and then this costs four mana, and we can still cast it, and that's pretty good. Not the greatest of hits, but, I mean, they're fine. We can do Gatekeeper Zealot next turn. Ugh, spawn gang commander out of hand. Yikes. Four, I could play Ashling in one of these. I could play Skoa Ember Mage and kill their spawn gang commander. Gets them closer to cat recasting Flage again. Um, play Gatekeeper and Zealot, but then this thing starts picking off. They have to sacrifice their spawns for this to do what it wants to do. I think I'm going to just steal as many of their cards as I can here. And cast Gatekeeper and Zealot. And then go to combat. I don't think I'm going to eat. Um, crew the Dreadmobile. Okay, land is fine. Although, not so much because now the Spawn Gang Commander can activate quicker. We're also facing down a three-powered flyer here. More good draws. Although, the issue is if we play a Curse Marauder, they are going to sacrifice one of these to kill the Marauder, which causes us to sacrifice one of these... And then they get two cards in their yard, and then they have six and can recast Flage. So that, I don't know if that's the right choice here. Um, so I'm just going to play 
Ashling. Ping them. Hold the Accursed Marauder for when Flage comes back down, I guess. Use Zealot to tap down this thing. Can start whittling away at their spawns here by attacking. Maybe they start throwing spawns at their own cards to get Flage back as well, which is something I can't really do anything about. Or they could just, like, burn me out here, too. Yeah, they're just going for the burn. Okay. It's probably going to work. There's just too much burn from Gang Commander and Flage coming back as well. Land, Conduit, Goblin, Glyph, Elemental. Everything is pretty good over there. They have a very powerful draw, that's for sure. Okay, so that could be as big as a three-powered creature now. So they're going to attack with it. I block with Ashling. They throw one of the other spawns at Ashling here. No? Okay. So they're casting Flage next turn no matter what. So I guess I have to s do Marauder right now. Going for the face, and they can do it again, and then Flage comes down next turn, and I have no way to gain life, unfortunately. So that does look like it will do it here. Yeah, they just do it again. They escape Flage next turn. I can't deal 12 points, 13 points of damage to them. Yeah, they just block, 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 I just do whatever they want here. And then I can sacrifice two of them, but it doesn't matter, so. Flage waiting in the, uh, in the ramparts just kind of ruined us that game. We knew we had to play around it and just beat it twice, but third time, third time was too much. All right, we start on the draw here, and no blue, but no Kappa Cannon here either, so I think we'll keep this, and how do we sequence this now? I That we drew a mountain, I guess we go Vault Mountain, Cranial Ram, and then the following turn, Marauder Landscape, maybe? Yeah, that's something you usually want to kill... 
But do I want to kill it? Actually, a nice little combo is with this on the stack, you could actually use Flare of Malice to kill a creature. That's pretty good. I hadn't even considered that. So let's do this. Let's see if we can pull off that combo here. It might mean they get an extra energy or two. I hope they don't get up to six where they can use this, but... I mean, if two turns from now, if we can Marauder trigger on the stack, Flare of Malice, sacrifice the Marauder, then we have nothing to sacrifice, and then they... They then sacrifice it. That's three energy. Now they're up to four. So I need to get a black out of this first one here. So let's do this. Go get the black. I could discharge something right now too. I guess I could discharge the Royal Cartographer right now, just because I really don't want them to get up to... I mean, all it takes is a land and any energy card. So I think I'm just going to kill this one now. And then next turn, do the whole Marauder Malice trick, assuming they play another creature. can't block or I mean we can but we're not going to block that's not another creature let's see if they use this for another creature now no they don't ooh Kappa Cannon here I can't cast that though I still think I need to wait here for another creature to come down. I think this combo is too good. So... We're not doing anything then. We just do this. Get on in. And I guess I could keep up Flare of Malice if I need to. And then at the end of the turn sacrifice the landscape. Got a couple options here. Alright, that should let us do what we're going to do here. I got so much energy. Really got to hope no scurry of gremlins. <laughs> Alright, so sack this. Go get a swamp here. My turn. Mountain. So full control. Pay this, resolve, with that on the stack, we go ahead and Flare of Malice sacrificing this. And then they have to sacrifice both of their creatures here. That is a nice little combo I did not see. They might just pay three and, and kill my 1-1. One, one. They've got so much energy, they may as well. Yeah, I figured they might... There we go. All right, we did it. And then we get to play another Cranial Ram as well. Oh, we're still in full control here. And then we can connive... No, we can't, because it costs an extra black. I always forget that. Darn. Almost. Thriving Sky Claw. So much energy. We should be able... Oh, I just played... The, I should not have played the land knowing that I would play Blood Soaked Insight. That was a mistake, but... All right, what is up with the internet right now? <laughs> Wasn't experiencing this before. I don't know. 
Oh, they've got ether, uh, ether spike. Okay, good for you. They were gonna counter whatever we did, so. Sure, sure. Still waiting for a blue here or a way to, uh, a way to dump it. All right, down goes the germ. We've got nothing. Still got nothing. This is now out of galvanic discharge range. And we're dead next turn. Even if we draw a blue. <laughs> Ether Revolt. Yeah, I've had my fun with that card. Oh, there we go. That, I suppose, is an out. So we can still attack here. And then sacrifice it to deal four damage here. All right. Okay. So that let us survive. Let's see if we can dodge a couple of top decks over there. We dodged one. Hmm. We have to outrace this pretty quickly here. Let's do this. They're going to want to kill the apprentice more than they're going to want to kill this thing. So let's see what they drew here this time. I mean, if they get any amount of energy. Yeah, land gets them an energy and then they can shoot down, shoot me for one here. I know they've got a land in their hand. I wonder if it's a double, like a uh, a landscape land. Gosh, this cannoneer has been in our hand a lot more than our uh, <laughs> than our blue sources have. So we do have lethal here, so they have to chump. Sure, go to damage. I mean, I, I'm not gonna dis. I'm not gonna keep a, a mountain over the cannoneer, so I guess I'm doing this. And end the turn. All right, one more land. Let's go. I've lost so many of these games with like ether revolt just like there's so many games where it seems like I should not have lost so they're probably gonna do it here if they uh, that does kind of save them goodness gracious Should have kept that in hand for the Spymaster's Vault here. So they're going to block this and shoot down that here. And then I sacrifice it to the Dreadmobile. Yeah, that was so dumb playing that land. I just sometimes just get ahead of myself. Because if I draw an island, then I could play Cannoneer this turn. Oh, they're going to shoot the Apprentice down. Interesting. Okay. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> See? Oh! 
so dumb. I would have been able to draw two and discard the swamp. So now it doesn't really matter because this is our only blue source in the entire deck. And if I discard it, I can't cast Cannoneer. And if I cast Cannoneer, I don't need the blue source. So... So punished. So now I can't cast this card. I guess I can loot it away next time if they draw their draw away out again. Which they did exactly. Shoot down exactly my servo here, so perfect. And I have punted this game away. I mean, I, I guess that's what we do here, so... Yeah, I would have won this turn, because I would have had Cannoneer on the battlefield. Could have crewed this, equipped it. Alright, let's see if we can get out of it here. Okay, that's two more damage to my face. Suppose it's not lethal next turn, though. All right, we get to uh, we get to do the whole thing again here, and this might actually be lethal. Let's see. Okay, so 5-5, five, five. yeah, that should do it here. Just for some extra insurance, why not? And there we go. All right. We rightfully got the win. <laughs> Through my punts, so we'll take it. Okay, we're first here with a pretty good hand. I mean, it's not great, I guess. The rebirth isn't outstanding. Discharge, landscape. I don't know exactly what to get with this. I think we've got a couple of... We've got a double red card in the deck. I could have played Mountain for a turn one discharge. I don't think I need to do that, though. Yeah, I didn't think so. So, I think I'm going to get Mountain here because of the mythic that we've got. You know, I've got a couple, s several removal spells. Alright. Can't do anything about that. Can't do anything except a Galvanic Discharge this turn. No play, sure. Capper Cannoneer, there you are. Should have adjusted my mana base. <laughs> Alright, let's see if they've got Ether Spike or not. If they did, they chose not to use it. This Accursed Marauder has really overperformed <laughs> in this deck, particularly. They got rid of Legion Leadership, and now they're probably looking to kill the Familiar, maybe? No? Okay, still nothing. Unicorn is fine. Another discharge, I guess. Sure. <laughs> All right, are they gonna kill this? If I if they do, I can pyretic rebirth it back and kill the unicorn as well. Oof. 
didn't want to do it that way. Had all my mana up. And end the turn holding up discharge again. We're not putting a ton of pressure, but I mean... We, we, we've got like removal for the next like three things if we want it. I think I'm going to hold on to discharge this time. Okay, we've got all of them. Just in case they play something bigger, I need this extra energy for. Okay, still nothing. Kappa Cannoneers just laughed at us. It's like, what if you took a mulligan in like half of your games this draft? <laughs> That's got flash, but sure, I'll take it. Maybe they're going to some sort of fight spell, but that's not in blue-white. I don't know what why they would have played that on their turn. But we will swiftly get rid of it. Alright, if they've got a combat trick, we can still use... Well, they have to decide if they're going to use their combat trick before we resolve the discharge or not, so... Amphibian Downpour, making both my things a 1-1. One -one. Okay. Sure. So I have an, a, a Marauder I can get back with Rebirth to deal two to something. Ooh, there is a blue. Not too bad. This can deal up to six to something. Hope they don't have Ether Spike for my Kappa Cannoneer, but I kind of have to cast it. These are still artifacts, so... Let's do this, and then tap that. Why can't I improvise? So six, four, five. Do these lose a bit? Oh, they're not even artifacts anymore. Okay, that's fine, I guess. For some reason, I did not realize that this also made them... Loses all abilities, in my mind, didn't mean loses artifact, but it does. I mean, I knew that somewhere deep down in my system. I just... didn't do anything about it so let's do this and then cap a cannoneer Ooh, not exactly the one you're going to want to have countered but sure do they have another one Okay, go to two. Still have two removal spells in hand. Do they have the energy board white, maybe? Okay, that just gets rid of the ram. Okay, 
And nothing else. Okay. So then we just go ahead and do this here. Get back Cranial Ram and attack. Which puts us at our third trophy out of four attempts at a red-black deck with another 7-1. This deck is really slept on in this format. I mean, I got some pretty late pieces to it. The Cranial Rams keep wheeling. They're very good. A Curse Marauder, you saw the combos it had in this, in this deck. Flare of Malice with a Curse Marauder was really, really good. Marionette Apprentice is great. Four discharges, you can't beat that. Gotta love it. I wish I would have had one more island in the deck, but is what it is. We'll take the seven and one very happily. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you next time for your daily draft.